right, so um, you were saying, we were talking earlier just about how there's a misconception uh, with people thinking that all the RTA bus drivers are making like $60,000 a year. Yeah, it, it is a, a misconception that's been printed in the newspaper. Uh, our employees cannot make that in a year without working a lot of overtime. And for a person at the top level pay as a traditional bus driver to make those kind of wages, he has to work 66 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. So in 2015, uh, we worked 238,000 hours of overtime. And when you have that much overtime, it does raise the gross pay up. That's just the way it works. But that's not constantly the same. We do have people that want to work and will work at all opportunities to make extra money. That is permitted under the contract. We don't recommend it because we feel it could be a safety issue of having a driver out there 16 hours a day uh, is awful hard to do driving a bus. And so um, why are you guys working so much overtime? Well, during 2015, the, the company did have a problem finding qualified drivers. Uh, they're very strict on the qualifications. You have to have a good clean driving record. You have to be able to pass their, their physical test. You have to pass the DOT physical. And frankly, there's not a lot of people can do all that and still have a good background check. So they will literally go through 600 applicants to find 40 people. And out of the 40, maybe 10 will make it through. So it's not an easy thing to, to do. But that's why they were short. They just could not find drivers. And since we have to keep the buses rolling, then you use what you have. And then that means you put the people out there on overtime. And, and sometimes people are working overtime even though they don't want to. Well, we have to fill all the seats in the buses uh, with drivers. So... If we can't get volunteers, then we are mandatory by the company contract that we will put people in those seats and they will drive until they're told to get out of the seat. And because of those kind of conditions, that's why you're, you're saying you're seeing quite a few people leave? Well, that is one of our concerns in working conditions. Um, that has been addressed in its contract. And we hope that will eliminate some of that mandatory overtime. Uh, putting a restriction on it, but that has been a big issue with people having to work those excessive long hours. Can you say how it's been worked in the contract? Yeah, how it's going to be? Yeah. In a new contract, the maximum they can make you work as a driver is 11 hours. So that would be eight straight and three overtime? It could be, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And that is something that you guys have already agreed to it's part of the new contract. You're just trying to get two other issues. Right, that has tentatively been agreed to by both parties. Okay, and so what are the two major issues that you were saying now? Well, one is um, we wanna get our raises, a 2% raise, which doesn't even keep up with the cost of living. Uh, we'd like to have our raises effective from April of 2015 to the current date with back pay on all hours we worked. Um, you know, we have a contract that says you come to work, we pay you X dollars, and we provide you these benefits. So we come to work. They get us to work, they pay the wages and benefits. But now we have an issue with our insurance. And that is? It is a complete flip of what we've been having in the past. Now we have to pay the full deductible and up in front in advance before any insurance starts to go into effect. Additionally, uh, the premiums that we are being given are inflated premiums. And there's money in our premiums to pay to RTA to build a reserve fund and to help pay back for the HSA account that they are putting money into we're being asked to repay that. We haven't agreed to any of that. So your like, deductible could be about how much? 5,000 for a family policy. So someone would have to pay 5,000 first before they could? You would have to pay $4,450 for your premiums. 
and that's deducted out of your check, and you have to pay the $5,000 for a family policy before the insurance would begin to kick in. It is a lot of money for a family that most people are not wealthy, but they have to put the money back for it because if you don't have the cash, you can't buy the prescription. Um, and you were just standing there when I was talking to you on the phone about, tell me about you were standing there, like you guys lost like three, three people already? In we have been notified that several employees have left and went to other agencies to work just in the last two weeks. Uh, and good employees, people who've been there 10 years, have left. And why did they say they're leaving? Uh, well, one, this issue of our contract is, I'm sure, a, a concern. And um, some of the working conditions are just not acceptable. If you could find a job that doesn't work weekends and doesn't work till 3 in the morning, then that's pretty attractive. Is that the lady say work 3 in the morning? Yes, ma'am. We, we are almost a 24-hour operation. Our first bus, I believe, is out at 3.30 and our last one comes in at 2. That time between those is when we refuel them and clean them and get them ready to go out the next day. So how many bus drivers do you guys need to be fully staffed and how many do you have? Well, we have a total of 463 members. Of that 463, 271 are the big bus drivers and we have roughly a hundred project mobility drivers and that is the minimum levels that the company has established. So okay that's how many you have but that's the minimum right. level and we that, actually need more than that. Okay and that with that number that's including like that's why a lot of people are getting overtime and stuff like that. Yes. That yes ma'am. Okay, you know, there's a lot of people, depending on RTA, we've been talking to people like with URS, United Rehabilitation Services, um, just different people who like depend on like the Wesley Center and different places like that to, you know, get their food or, you know, for their yes. children, just or whatever. And people are worried, you know, like, how am I going to get to work? How well, we, we have, to to these people? well, we, we apologize because we don't believe that the public and our customers should be in the middle of this fight. Uh, we have asked several times to go to binding arbitration and let's accept what the binding arbitration produces. Let's not drag the public into this. We have uh, never wanted a strike and that's why we are going on 22 months of negotiation because we did not want to strike. But if two parties can't agree I think it's only fair to the public that you get a third party to come in and resolve those two issues and not have a strike. I mean, it's, it's senseless to have a strike. So is RTA saying no to arbitration? To binding arbitration, they've refused to go, yes. If they would agree to binding arbitration, we could announce right after we have a signed agreement for binding arbitration, there will not be a strike. But we can't do that because they will not agree to it. Okay. Is there anything else that I'm not asking you that you want to that you want to say? Is there anything else you feel like the public needs to know about? I just hope that this gets settled before the strike goes into effect. Apparently, it's going to go to a strike because Mark has invested time and money in putting up fencing around the RTA facilities. Uh, if he was planning on settling the contract, I don't think he would be spending the money to do that. Uh, 